Hello, this is Dr. Raglan, Dean of Zombie Hunter University. Today, I follow up my giant spider lecture with some tips and tactics for dealing with flaming giant spiders. The flaming giant spider is a stronger, faster version of the giant spider with similar behavior patterns, so the strategies we discussed in our previous lecture apply here. However, we have a recommendation for undergraduate students, level 50 and below, who are contemplating a flaming giant spider hunt. Don't. We reckon your odds are approximately six times worse than those against a giant spider. In this case, failure is not only an option, but almost an inevitability. We are not saying that it's impossible for a skilled undergrad to kill a flaming giant spider with the weapons and stats available to him or her. However, it is extremely difficult. The flaming giant spider has twice as much health as its non-flaming cousin, and its damage inflicted is nearly twice as much. More importantly, the enraged speed and the disturbed speed are higher, equal to the enraged speed of a flaming giant wraith. This means that the speed the flaming wraith uses only when it lunges at you suddenly is the speed at which the flaming giant spider is running all the time. If you simply try to outsprint the flaming giant spider, you will run out of energy and slow down, allowing the beast to strike you. You can try dodging, but flawless execution is necessary. Also worth remembering, the flaming giant spider is better than the giant spider at escaping from a tight squeeze. It is possible to trap a flaming giant spider between light poles, but it will remain stuck only for a few seconds before suddenly rushing forward. If you're casually holding the trigger expecting half a minute of safety, you will be caught off guard and killed. Therefore, undergrads have three options. One, attack in a group. Two, slow the spider down. Three, speed themselves up. Let's take a brief look at the first option. Group boss hunts are a good way to save ammunition and remain relatively safe, but they do have their own pitfalls. The behavior of the target is less predictable because it will not be chasing only you, but also several other students, switching back and forth at random. This can lead to a situation in which you feel safe while the flaming giant spider attacks someone else, only to have it suddenly turn on you. Because the giant flaming spider will often be pinned down rather than running around the block, there is little opportunity to thin out aggro, which will make it hard to concentrate on the main target. Despite these drawbacks, chances of success are good. Just remember, you will share the experience earned equally with other participants, even if they did not contribute equally to the kill. Option number two, slowing the flaming giant spider down, requires weapons with high knockback. Unfortunately, there are not many weapons with the damage per second needed to kill a flaming giant spider in theoretically under two minutes, our baseline for selecting a weapon in any boss hunt, because it gives you a sporting chance to kill your target before it kills you. The same weapons that worked against a flaming wraith seem to work against a flaming giant spider, but the latter is more dangerous because it's so hard to outrun and because it is so impervious to knockback that it will practically run through a hail of bullets that would slow down a lesser opponent. That's why undergraduate students will probably resort to option three, a speed boost, in order to have a realistic chance of killing a flaming giant spider. Speed boosts are expensive, but in this case they are worth the cost. Students short on cash should wait for a special weekend event offering free speed boosts, or they can go boss hunting during holidays when seasonal bosses drop speed boost loot, such as the Christmas candy canes. To illustrate the use of speed boost, we have Nahum Gardner, whom we previously saw defeat a giant spider with an AA-12 shotgun. Here, his extra speed is enough to keep him safe, but just barely. Hoping to take advantage of his increased speed, Nahum occasionally switches to another shotgun, the Pain Shot 10, but the result is far from satisfying. The pain shot is a slightly odd weapon in that it requires more proficiency than the AA-12, but it does slightly less damage. So why does Nahum want to use it? Because, with its greater damage per hit and slower firing speed, the pain shot delivers almost as much damage per second as the AA-12 while using half as much ammunition, making the pain shot less expensive to operate. Unfortunately, firing only 1.5 times per second results in less knockback, and even Nahum's speed boost is not enough to compensate. 
If we compare the two videos of Nahum using the pain shot on speed boost, firing against a giant spider and then against a giant flaming spider, we can see that in the former there is a comfortable margin of error, allowing Nahum to safely switch between melee weaponry and the pain shot shotgun, thus minimizing ammunition expenditure. Against the flaming giant spider, he cannot use melee at all, and he barely gets away with the pain shot, frequently returning to the greater knockback of the AA-12. Despite these difficulties, he does succeed. If you do not have access to a weapon with enough damage per second to meet our minimum requirement, speed boost is essential. In fact, we prefer weapons with well above minimum requirements. Students who do not have enough proficiency to equip such weapons might consider using a damage boost on top of a speed boost, if they can afford it. Otherwise, wait until you have reached postgraduate status, level 50 and above, and purchase the best heavy machine gun or minigun that is within your budget. In our next demonstration, we see Dr. Lisa, a graduate student above level 100, using an XL Gunner 8. An expensive limited edition weapon, the XL Gunner 8 is essentially a minigun disguised as a heavy machine gun, which is to say that despite its appearance, it acts like a Vulcan, splitting each bullet into two shots and thus spraying nearly 25 rounds per second for an impressive amount of knockback. The XL Gunner's advantage over the Vulcan is damage per second, which ranges from 308 to 364 depending on how much students invest in critical chance. This places the XL Gunner safely within our theoretical 2 minute kill time. Even so, Lisa has a hard time in her battle with the flaming giant spider, which often seems to be shrugging off the bullets and charging dangerously close. Fortunately, Lisa manages to keep just ahead of her prey until eventually it falls dead. Like the giant spider without much warning, you're not going to see signs that it's growing weaker, which allows you to shift to a single shot weapon or melee or chainsaw. Worth noting, although the XL Gunner is no longer manufactured, it has been superseded by the SCAR 9000, which has the same firing rate and higher DPS, so that is an option, although it is very expensive. For students seeking a more affordable alternative, we suggest the Hammerhead 47, which not only costs less than either the XL Gunner or the SCAR 9000, but also uses less ammunition because of its slower firing rate. Its DPS puts it just within our 2 minute limit, but is its knockback sufficient to keep you alive? The answer to that question is, it depends on your dodging skill. If you have maximum agility, you should be able to dodge most of the Flaming Giant Spider's attacks but you will also need high endurance and strong armor to protect you when the occasional misstep results in your suffering a blow. It's not a bad idea to carry spare armor and medicine to sustain yourself during the encounter. In my case, I get off to a good start before becoming careless. Perhaps if I spent more time in the field instead of the classroom, I would do better. I have to switch armor and take some medicine. After that, I manage to find a hunting spot, a hedge that will trap the giant flaming spider with some nearby vehicles that will block most of the surrounding aggro. Knowing the direction my opponent is following, I wait on the opposite side of the hedge, then I open fire. The aggro does cause a bit of trouble. As I move to dodge it, the flaming giant spider moves too. I don't want the target to get around the hedge, so I move to another spot, which also offers some cover. At this point, ultimate success seems highly likely. It's just a matter of not making mistakes. The flaming giant spider does cause me some concern because it seems sometimes on the verge of jumping over the hedge. Therefore, I stay a safe distance back next to the vehicle, which I can use as cover if necessary. Since the flaming giant spider is trapped, expending a thousand rounds of rifle ammunition into it seems a waste, so I switch to my corpse shooter pistol. This will take longer to kill the target, but from my position of safety, there is no rush. Actual kill time here is more than I would prefer, but not bad for a 110 proficiency pistol. The simple trick of trapping the flaming giant spider behind a hedge or a fence is the best strategy for undergrad students unable to equip a heavy machine gun. Use your best grinding weapon to keep yourself alive while circling the block until you can find a trap, then take position and hold your ground. That concludes today's lecture. We will return with a discussion of Black Titans. Mm -hmm.